So in the last video, we, uh, we burned up an LED by giving it more voltage than the manufacturer said that it, that it should take, and it ended up drawing a lot more current than it should have and ended up burning itself up. So in this video, I wanna kind of dive in and, and explore a little bit about what might have happened there. And I guess the, a good place to start is, is to think about the way an LED works with respect to voltage and current. And so um, sometimes the manufacturers will, will tell you, will give you a data sheet that, go, that gives you a lot of specs about your LED. In this case, um, they didn't. They just gave me this little card with the voltages. Um, but if you did have a little bit more detail, some, one of the things they might give you is a chart that looks like this that gives you voltage um, on, on the x-axis and current on the y-axis. And for, for pretty much any LED, and really a, a, any diode for that matter, what this will look like is, is you'll get very little current draw um, for, for very little voltage here. And then as you increase voltage, at some point, uh, the, the current draw will increase significantly like this. Um, this is often what this will look like. And then what they've told me is that I should operate this at, at about 2 volts. And so maybe 2 volts will be right here. And that corresponds with, you know, 20 milliamps. And this, this is what, the, what, what they did tell me. Um, if they had given me a little bit more data, they might have shown me this whole chart. Um, but what they did tell me is that uh, at 2 volts and 20 milliamps, I, I, would, I would be, or at 2 volts, I would be drawing 20 milliamps. But what we observed is as we increased the voltage just a little bit, we saw the current go up quite a bit. Um, and so this is, this is how, in the last video, how the LED actually responded. And so the important thing here is that we want to make sure that the LED maintains this, this 2 volts. Otherwise, if we increase the voltage a little bit, the current goes up, uh, the LED draws too much power, and it burns itself up, which is what we saw in the last video. So if, if we had a, a circuit where we had a voltage source that, let's say we have a voltage source here um, that's 5 volts. This is 5 volts, and I want to hook that up to an LED. And so this is my LED. This is the symbol for an LED right here. And this, of course, is the symbol for a power source. Um, it could be a battery or it could be, in my case, I have this, this, uh, this laboratory power source. But, but in any event, this is a 5-volt power source connected to an LED. Um, and if I just hook this up like this, which is what we did before, um, we found that we destroyed the LED. And the reason for that is that <clears throat> if, you, if you think back to, uh, or if you're familiar with Kirchhoff's voltage law, what that says is that the voltages or the voltage drops across every component in the circuit has to equal zero. And so what that means is that this particular component here has a voltage drop, if you will, of plus 5 volts. So the battery is, is providing us with 5 volts. And since the only other component in the circuit is the LED, the LED has to, be, has to consume 5 volts. And, of course, if the LED is consuming 5 volts, you know, we're over here somewhere and we're drawing, you know, a ton of current. And, and then the, and that's, of course, going to be too much power for the LED, and, it, and it, it fails, as we saw in the last video. But what I could do is I could insert a, another component into this circuit right here, a resistor, for example, that, let's say the LED, we want the LED to draw, we'll say 1.9 volts, just to be on, the, on this conservative, uh, you know, sort of safe side. Um, which means that if this is drawing 1.9, uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law again says that all of the components, all of the voltage drops of all of the components in the circuit have to add up to zero. So we have a plus 5, we have a minus 1.9, which means that this resistor must somehow drop 3.1 volts um, across, across that resistor. Um, and so here we have plus 5, minus 1.9, minus 3.1, that equals zero. And so this circuit will, will work, and we'll have 1.9 volts at the LED. We just need to figure out what kind of resistor to use that's going to give us a voltage drop of 3.1 volts. So to do that, we can actually just use Ohm's law, because Ohm's law relates voltage to current times resistance. And in this case, we, we know the voltage. We know the voltage is going to be 3.1 3 volts. 
um, we actually also know the current because remember the manufacturer of this LED has told us that this 1.9 volts um, will happen at, with 20 milliamps. So 20 milliamps would be 0 0.02 amps, um, which is the way we want to write it if we're using Ohm's law, times the resistance. So we can just solve for R. So if we just use a little bit of algebra, we find that R equals 3.1 volts divided by 0 0.02 amps. And if I just plug that into my calculator, 3.1 divided by 0 0.02 is going to be 155 ohms. So if this is 155 ohm resistor, then it, it should drop 3.1 volts. And of course, this is the source is giving us 5 volts. And so the LED should end up with 1.9 volts. And it should be happy. And it should draw 20 milliamps, which means that, that this, this uh, calculation here will, will, in, will indeed give us the appropriate voltage drop. So let's actually try this out in the circuit. Well, so one thing is I don't have a 155 ohm resistor. Uh, if I look in my little collection over here, I have a, uh, I have a 150 ohm resistor. And I have a 220 ohm resistor, um, but neither of those is 155. In fact, I don't even know that they make 155 ohm resistors. So whenever we're designing a circuit like this, we, we don't want too much current to go through this LED. We saw what happens when, when that happens. So I'll be conservative and actually use more resistance there. So I'll use the 220 ohm resistor. And so if I go grab that out of my little bin here, Here is, here is a 220 ohm resistor. You can see the colors are red, red, brown, which is 2, 2, and then brown is, is, is a, a single zero, 220 ohms. And we'll connect this in series, just like we had in our diagram. So I'll turn my power supply off, and actually I'll also throw this LED away. This is the LED that we destroyed last time, so I'll make sure I put that somewhere that I don't try to use it again. And I'll get a good LED. And remember, I want to I want to look at the the pins here. The shorter pin should connect to the negative terminal. And I don't want to go directly. I don't want to hook my power source up directly. So I'm going to move my positive terminal, my power source, over somewhere else on the breadboard. Let me get this out of the way and find my resistor here. And I'm going to hook the resistor up between the LED and the positive power source. And so now what we have is we have <clears throat> our negative side of the power source, which of course is where the electrons flow from. So the electrons are coming from the negative side of the power source through the LED into the resistor. I'll use a little pointer here. Into the resistor, through the resistor, and then back out the positive side. So this is that circuit that we, that we um, had just drawn. And this is the 220 ohm resistor. So this is more resistance than than the minimum that we calculated. We calculated this could be a 155 ohm resistor, but they don't make 155 ohm resistors, so we're using the, uh, the 220. So I'll turn on, and the LED actually comes on at 2 volts. Um, but if we increase the voltage now, now I'm significantly more voltage. I'm over 3 volts now, which is much more than we had last time when the LED was destroyed. Um, and in fact, I should be able to go, whoops, I went a little bit over, but that's okay because I used a bigger resistor than I needed. But if I go to 5 volts, here we are at 5 volts, and you can see we're drawing 20 milliamps. And so this circuit is working fine. The LED is on. It doesn't appear to be complaining. Um, it's not getting warm or anything like that. Um, everything is working just fine. And so oftentimes in circuits, um, in fact, almost always in circuits, you will see a resistor somewhere connected in series with LEDs, and that is to limit the current through the LED. Um, and in fact, because we used a bigger resistor here than we needed, um, we, can, we can increase the voltage a little bit more. It can go down a little bit less. The brightness of the LED is not really changing that much. In fact, I'll turn the lights off here so you can see. If you remember in the last video, small changes in voltage were making, making a huge change in the brightness of the LED. Um, and here you can see you know, the LED really isn't changing its brightness at all, and I'm, I'm making, you know, comparatively much larger changes in the voltage. And you can also see the current is, is just consistently drawing the 20 milliamps that it should. 
Um, so this is this is a much more robust circuit, and this is basically just a great demonstration of why you all almost always have a resistor in series with with your LED. Now one last thing I want to do. This was a uh, 220 ohm resistor. Let's put in a 1,000 ohm resistor, um, which is much more resistance than we need. Um, and so I'll turn this off so I'm not working on the live circuit. Take the 220 ohm resistor out. This is a 1,000 ohm resistor, so brown, black, red. So that's a 1, 0, and the red is two more zeros. So this is a 1,000 ohms. And I will connect that in and turn the circuit back on. And the LED is, is on again. And I'll turn the light off just in case that helps you see. The LED is, is on. Um, and it's maybe a little bit dimmer than it was with the 220 ohm resistor. Um, but you also see, um, you see the current is a little bit less. And this isn't the greatest ammeter because it only gives me um, hundredths of an amp. Um, but it, it is, I mean, before it was 20 milliamps. Now it's showing 10 milliamps. It's hard to say exactly what the difference is because it only gives me this much precision. Uh, but it is drawing less current. Um, the LED seems to be maybe slightly less bright, but but certainly bright enough. Um, and again, I can I can change the voltage here pretty significantly um, without any danger of, of damaging the LED. And so you'll often see that you don't have to find the absolute smallest resistor possible. Um, now, if you want to get the bright, the, you know, as much brightness out of the LED as you can, and you don't care about drawing as much current as the LED will draw, then you can use the calculation that I just showed you. But most of the time, you know, you can just throw in, you know, a thousand ohm resistor, and that'll cover you. Uh, and so a lot of times when I'm building circuits, that's exactly what I'll do. I'll just throw in kind of a big resistor, something that will limit the current so the LED doesn't destroy itself with too much voltage, um, and, and just kind of leave it at that. I won't go through the whole calculation. But at least now you've seen the calculation, so if you do want to do that, now you know how.